This video is a continuation of my previous annuity video, but in this one we're going to find uh, the periodic deposits. What if we know what the final value is and we're trying to find out what the P is, in other words the principal or the periodic deposit. Alright, so let's look at this example. How much should you deposit at the end of every three months? And Let me pause right there for a second. When you read every three months, I want you to know that n is 4. Uh, every three months is a quarter, so this is really another way of saying quarterly. There's another hint in this problem too, and I'll get to that in a second. So we're going to deposit at the end of every three months into an individual retirement account, an IRA, that pays 7%. There's our rate right there, 7%. Again, we're going to write that as, uh, in as a decimal instead of 7. And here's the other hint too, it's compounded quarterly. And so when you see con compounded quarterly, that's just another hint that n is going to be 4, even though you see every three months. It really means the same thing. Every three months is a quarter. Okay, so we know that we want a million dollars when we retire, and this million dollars is our final value. That's going to be our capital A in the formula. And we're going to retire in 38 years, so there's our time. Uh, when we're done answering that, we're also going to figure out how much of the $1 million comes from interest. So I'll show you that as well. So here's the formula we're going to use. It's the same formula you saw in a previous video, except that this time instead of solving for A, we're solving for P because we know what the final value is going to be. That's going to be our $1 million. And we're looking for how much should we be depositing every quarter. So we're looking for the periodic deposits this time. So here are the values we're going to need. We're going to, we know that the final value should be a million dollars. We know our interest rate is 7%. Uh, I'm going to type this in as a decimal. So 0.07. Our, our uh, money is being compounded quarterly every three months, so n is 4. And our time is a total of 38 years. So plugging all these values into the formula, we have a million times our rate of 0.07 divided by 4. This is the numerator's quantity. And then we're going to divide all of that by all of this stuff down here, which is uh, 1 plus 0.07 divided by 4, et cetera, et cetera, as you see. Now, it, you know, when you work this out, I would take the numerator separately and work out the denominator separately. Some of you can punch all of this in on your calculator and do it all in one shot. Some of you might need to do this step by step. So be really careful and make sure you get the same values that I'm going to show you here. All right, so here's my calculator, and I'm going to start with this rate divided by our n, our compound. So 0.07 divided by 4 gives us a value of 0 0.0175, and then we're going to multiply that by a million. And make sure you type in all the correct zeros here. There should be six zeros after this one. Okay, so when we do that, we get a value of 17,500, and this is our entire numerator. So I'm going to write that up here, and I'm going to leave that alone. Now let's go work on the denominator stuff. And again, I'm going to start with the rate divided by n, uh, the 0.07 divided by 4, which, as we've seen before, is 0 0.0175. And we're going to add 1 to that. And then what we'll do is we'll multiply, or sorry, we're going to raise it to this exponent here. Now, 4 times 38 is 152. So I'm going to take this 1.0175, and I'm going to raise it to the power of 152. And uh, just leave all of this on your calculator. Don't do any rounding at this point. We have one more thing to do in the bottom here, and we have to subtract 1 from that. Okay? And again, even at this point, you'll, you'll get a bunch of decimals on your calculator. Uh, and let's put all of this here in the denominator. All right, so I put all this into my denominator here of 12.9711, um, Maybe your calculator shows you more decimals, and maybe it shows you less. Obviously, this one shows me a lot more, but I'm not going to type all that in. Um, and then I just have one more thing to do. I'm going to take this 17,500, and I'm going to divide it by this result here. All right, so when you do this, you should get an answer of $1,349.15. Now, my math lab will say to take this answer, this periodic deposit, and just automatically round this up to the nearest dollar. If you're wondering why we have to do that, well, you could actually take this 13.49 and 15 cents here. You can actually take the original value we found and put it back into the original annuity formula, and you would see that it actually comes really close to a million dollars, but it's actually a few pennies shy. It comes out to 
and 97 cents. So if we just round this value up, if we just whatever we get here, and I know that you know 15 shouldn't really round 49 dollars up to 50, but whatever pennies we have, we're just going to automatically round this up, go to the next dollar, um, and you'll see that if we if we put in 1350 um, every quarter for 38 years, it will definitely reach our target of a million dollars, which is what we're after. Okay, if we put anything less than that, we'll we'll be short. So just rounding up to the nearest dollar is a nice easy way to go. Okay, and then the last part of this question is how much of that one million dollars that we have as a total, as our final value over here, how much of that actually comes from interest? And so to answer that question, we first need to figure out how much did we deposit into our account. And we're going to, as we just found, we're going to deposit thirteen fifty um, into this account. We're going to do this uh, four times a year because we're doing it quarterly and we're doing this for a total of 38 years so if we multiply 1350 times 4 times 38 this will tell us how much we have uh, that we have deposited over these many years so when you multiply those three values you get two hundred five thousand two hundred dollars and then the last thing is we're gonna take our final value of a million dollars we're gonna subtract from that the two hundred and five thousand two hundred dollars that we deposited and with that difference we'll be able to determine how much money did our two hundred five thousand two hundred dollars make for us that's called interest and when you take that difference it comes out to seven hundred ninety four thousand eight hundred dollars so we put in two hundred five thousand two hundred and that money made seven hundred ninety four thousand eight hundred dollars for us in interest really good stuff so that's using the annuity formula kind of backwards so to speak to find the periodic deposits instead of the final value this time